Mario Hernandez with Media Current. In today's Learning Bits video, I'm going to talk about CSS modules. CSS modules is not a methodology for uh, styling websites, React websites or Gatsby websites, but it's more of a method for setting up your workflow for styling a website. I'm not going to talk in detail about all the things you can do with CSS modules. There's, what I'm going to talk about is how to set up CSS modules so that it works with SAS rather than just CSS. You may not know this, but in a Gatsby site, CSS modules works out of the box. You don't have to do anything. The first thing I'll do is create a new Gatsby website. I'm just gonna use the default started, nothing fancy. I just wanna have something to work with so that I can configure CSS modules with SAS. So I'm going to run Gatsby new learning beats as my website name, and I'm going to let that run. This could take a while depending on your computer and your connection speed. So just let it run. As I said before, CSS modules works out of the box on a new Gatsby site. So you don't have to do anything to set that up. I'm going to show you how this works by creating a new CSS file inside the components directory. And I'm going to call this styles.module that CSS. This name is completely arbitrary. You can call it anything you want. I'm just calling it this just to show you. I'm using the header selector and I'm setting up a couple of rules for the header. One is the background color and the other one is the text color. Then I go to the header component and I'm going to import the new style sheet that I just created by typing import styles from and then specify the path to my new style sheet. The word styles can be anything you want. Typically styles is what most people use and that becomes the namespace for your style sheet. Then I'm going to remove the inline styles that the header component or the header selector has. And instead I'm going to add a class name attribute to the header element. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to add styles which is the name that we typed in the import above, and then the name of the class that is inside the styles, styles sheet. Once I save those changes and my Gatsby site rebuilt, you can see that now on the browser, my header has got a red background and white text. If we inspect the header, we can see that the inline styles that the header had before are gone and instead we have a class attribute with a specific class that was created by CSS modules. This class is unique and this ensures that these styles will never affect anything else on your website because this is a unique class that is dynamically created by CSS modules. If you notice that in the header we use class name. The reason we do that is because we can't use class as the attribute because class is a reserved keyword in Gatsby or React. Okay, now let me show you a more in-depth example of how CSS modules can work on a individual component. Inside the components folder, I'm going to create a new folder called button and that will be the name of my new component. Inside the button folder, I create an index.js to hold all the markup and JavaScript for the button. And in addition to that, I'm going to create a new style sheet called styles.module.css. Then I have wrote some JavaScript right, to create a new component for the button with all the typical things you would normally expect on a Gatsby component. And inside the style sheet for the button, I'm creating a couple of CSS rules, pretty basic stuff, assigning the button, uh, assigning the button a background color, text color, some padding, and a few other CSS rules. Once the styles are in place, then I'm going to import the new style sheet in the button component so that the styles can be applied to the button component. Again, I'm using import styles as the namespace and I'm linking to the path of my new style sheet for the button. Then I am assigning a class name attribute to both the anchor element and the button element that we have in our button code here. This time I'm assigning the pattern of styles.button because button is the actual CSS class that I type in my style sheet. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I want to use now this button on my pages. So I'm going to add it to the layout template. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to import the new component into the layout template. Then I'm going to go down to the main section of the page and just below the children variable, I'm going to add the new button component. When I save my changes and the page uh, is reloaded, you can see that now on my page, I have a new button. Let's say we wanted to add different variations for a button. Uh, let's say typically on a project, you will have more than one button. You have a primary button, a secondary button. So I'm going to create a new class here called button primary. And I'm going to first use one of CSS modules powerful tools, which is composites, which basically inherits anything that you pass from other elements or other selectors. And then you can override those changes if you need to. In this case, I'm saying, give me everything from the button rules above, but then override the background to change it to a different color. In this case, black. Now that I created this rule, the next thing is to go to the button where I'm using this button, in this case, the layout file, and assign this new class of primary. So again, I'm adding a class name attribute to the button and I'm passing the styles that button primary, which is the class that I will now want to pass to this button. And now you can see that the button is black. If we inspect the button, one thing we can see is that CSS modules automatically has added two classes to our button. They're both unique classes to this component. One is the regular class for the button, which inherits all the default styles for the button. And the other one is the primary button. Both of these class have a very unique string. So this is great. We can see that CSS modules just out of the box work on our Gatsby side. We don't have to do anything. And if this is all we wanted to do, this is perfect, right? However, most modern projects require you to work with something other than CSS, right? Because CSS is limiting. So being able to use SAS is definitely uh, an advantage when styling a, a project. So what we are going to do is figure out how we can use CSS modules, but this time with SAS. And just to show you, if we were to rename, typically, if, but just renaming a CSS style sheet to SCSS should work just fine, just because it's the same syntax. But in our case, on our Gatsby site, that is not working. Gatsby is not able to determine what the SCSS means on our style sheet name. So in order for us to set up SAS in our Gatsby site, we need to add a couple of plugins that will allow us for Gatsby to be able to work with SAS style sheets. There are two plugins we need to do. One is the Gatsby plugin SAS, and that one has a dependency of Node SAS. So we are basically using LibSAS, right? LibSAS is the Node version of SAS by running npm install Node SAS and Gatsby plugin SAS. We're installing those at the same time. The next step is to configure our Gatsby config file to add the new plugin we just installed, which is the Gatsby plugin SAS. And this will allow to now work with SAS style sheets. Now that we added the plugin, uh, let's rename the style sheet we created for the button to styles.module that SCSS, and then we are going to change the import to also reference the new style sheet name. It's a good idea to stop your Gatsby develop command from running while you do this, and then you can restart it again so that Gatsby is aware of the new changes. So now we're running Gatsby develop one more time so that our site can be compiled. And if we open our site again, we shouldn't really see any difference. The reason is because uh, we haven't really made any changes to our styles. However, we are now using SAS rather than just plain CSS. So let's test this by changing the background color of the primary button to the purple that Gatsby uses. 
and once we save the changes and we preview our site you can see that our button now is purple so this tells us that we are now using SAS and CSS modules at the same time and you can see both classes there the background color now shows that it's purple and our button is working great next uh, I'm going to rename the layout.css file to layout.scss this is uh, where all the global styles for the default Gatsby site are once we rename this file uh, we are going to change the reference uh, on the import of this file in the layout.js so that our Gatsby site now uses the SAS version of the file rather than the CSS version of the file. The last example I'd like to show is I'm not a big fan of inline styles and I know that's very common on React or Gatsby sites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this inline styles for the header and I'm going to transfer those to our style sheet so that Gatsby can still get the same styles except uh, from a style sheet rather than being inline. The next step is to remove the inline styles from the div and instead add a new class name attribute in which we pass the styles.container which is the selector we created in the style sheet. Once those changes are saved and I reload my page, you can see that now we are back to where we started. The difference now is that all the styles that used to be in line are now part of a style sheet and they can be managed that way. So that is it for a quick intro to CSS modules and how you can use them on your Gatsby website along with SAS. Hope this was helpful. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.